Hello children, how are you? Hope you all are well. Let's check previous homework whether you have written all the answers correctly or not. What is ground water? Answer is rain water also seeps under the ground. It is called ground water. Question number two. What is freezing? The process by which liquid water changes into solid ice is called freezing. Question number three. What is boiling? On heating, liquid water evaporates quickly with bubbles coming out. This is called boiling. Question number four is what is melting? The solid ice changes into liquid water. This process of changing solid ice into liquid water is called melting. Let's recall what we have learned in the previous chapter. What is air? Air is a mixture of many gases. Air has mainly nitrogen, oxygen, carbon dioxide and water vapor. Air is colorless, tasteless and has no smell. We cannot see air. We use air for drying clothes, for filling toys, tire tubes, swimming tubes, etc. Water can be found in solid, liquid and gaseous forms. Water can change from one form to another by heating or cooling. Water cycle is a continuous cycle of changing one form of water into the other. Some human activities pollute water. Water pollution is harmful to all living things. It is important to conserve water because life is not possible without water. Children, can you tell me where do we live? Yes, we all live on the planet Earth. Have you ever thought, why is the life possible on the Earth? Life is possible on the Earth because of air, water, sunlight and soil. We know air is present everywhere. We take in oxygen and oxygen is very important for us. Water. All living things like plants, animals and humans need water to survive. Sun. Sun is the main source of energy. We get energy from the sun. So air, water, sunlight and soil. These are the elements for life. In this chapter we will learn about soil. Chapter 10. Soil. Soil is necessary element for the life. As all the plants grow in the soil, we know plants are the primary source of food because only plants can able to make their own food. All animals and humans are depend on plants directly or indirectly for their food. Children, do you know soil is the home of many insects and small animals. Children, can you give some animals name? Those who are living in soil. Some animals like rabbit, rat and some insects live in soil. Look at this picture. What you can see in this picture? Yes, there are so many plants, grass, everywhere is green because of plant. What are the things required to grow a plant? Plants need carbon dioxide, sunlight, water for making their food. Beside the air, water and sunlight, what do plants need to grow? You can find this in gardens and even inside the pots. What is that? Yes, there is soil. Soil is the topmost layer of the earth's surface. As you can see here, this is soil where plants grow. 
We have just studied many animals and small insects living in soil. When these plants, animals die, then what happened? Look at this picture. Have you ever seen something like this? We have seen in the gardens and forest. These are dried leaves and straw fallen from trees. Children, can you tell me? Dried leaves, dead animals and insects remain when they die on the earth like this. What would happen then? That plants, animals and insects and dried leaves etc. break up into small pieces due to sunlight and rain and gradually get into the soil. Break up into small pieces due to sunlight and rain. As you can see in this picture, this is the upper layer. This is the upper layer where dried leaves are lying. Slowly, slowly it break up into small pieces as you can see here and get mixed into the soil. And what are these tiny pieces look like soil called? We call it humus. Humus is made up of the remains of dead plants and animals. Children, can you tell me why humus is important for the plants and for soil? Humus holds the water. Humus acts as a sponge. It retains moisture in the soil for a long time by soaking up water. Humus acts as a cover over the soil. So sunlight does not fall directly on over the soil surface which keeps the soil moisture for a long time. Humus provide nutrients for the plants. Nutrients are useful substances present in the soil which are useful for healthy growth of a plant. Plants absorb nutrients from the soil through their roots. You can see here Plants stay fixed in the soil with the help of their root. So, plants absorb nutrients from the soil. Who provides nutrients for the plant? Humus provides nutrients for the plants. When do we say this soil is fertile? Soil is said to be fertile. When we see that plants growth is getting better. We say that the soil is good. Children, we have just read that nutrients are necessary for the good growth of the plant. Then we can say that the soil in which nutrients are present, that soil is fertile. So, humus make the soil fertile. Humus is usually dark brown and black in color. You can see here dark brown and black. Due to the presence of nutrients and minerals in the humus. We just read, humus is present in the soil. Can you tell me what else are present in the soil? Soil is the mixture of tiny pieces of rocks. Minerals, water, air and humus. So how do we know that the soil contains air? Children, you must have seen around you when you pour water in the pot and in your gardens, then bubbles are seen coming out of the soil. Have you ever thought why this happened? These bubbles are coming out due to air present in the soil. When water enters space between the soil, it fills the space which was filled with air. Now the air exits as bubbles. This shows that soil contains air in it. Children, how do we know that the soil contains water? Children, if we take soil in a vessel and cover it with a lid and heat it or keep it in the sun, after some time when you remove the lid and see what will appear on the lower surface of the lid, here you can see, when we remove the lid after heating, what will appear 
on the lower surface of the lid. What is this? You see drops of water on the inner side of the lid. Where does it water comes from? Yes, this water was present in the soil. The water in the soil forms water vapor when heated. The vapor touches the lid and cools down to form droplets of water. On heating, the water evaporates. Here, what is evaporation? The water changes into water vapor due to the sun's heat. The process of changing water into water vapor called evaporation. Then water vapor cools and condenses as water drops on the inner surface of the lid. Now what is condensation? On cooling, the water vapor changes back into the water. Changing into the water on cooling is called condensation. This shows that the soil contains water. Children, have you ever thought how soil is formed? Look at this picture. What do you see in this picture? Yes, this is the picture of soil. What else is seen in soil? This, this. What are these? How did these stones get into the soil? Stones are present in the soil because soil formed by the breaking down of rocks. Children, you may have seen someone around you breaking stones with the help of a hammer. This is called hammer. But how does this process happen in the nature? In nature, the sun's heat, wind, air, ice and plants help in the breaking down of rocks. But how they are help in breaking down of rocks? We will see one by one. First, we will see by sun. In this picture, you can see this is a rock. But who breaks the rock? So many things are working to break the rocks and change it into soil. When the weather is hot, rocks also heat up, get little bigger in size. But generally we cannot see. When the weather becomes cold, rocks get little smaller. This happens almost every day. We know usually days are hotter than night. So rock cracks and break up into small pieces due to the strong light of the sun especially in summer season and when the sun sets at night the temperature decreases and this action occur daily and during the summer season the temperature is very high due to the high temperature the size of the stone increases slightly and when the temperature decreases at night the size of the rock decreases again this action occur daily due to which the stone and slowly slowly these cracks divide the stones and this process continue in this way children you have read in the previous chapter that there is so much strength in the air that the wind can take any object so a strong wind have an impact on the rock which blow away the dust particles due to the strong winds the rocks are pressurized causing them to crack this happen mostly in deserts due to the continuous flow of wind rocks begin to break Due to the continuous flow of wind, the shape of the rocks changes. In this picture, you can see, this was the rock. But due to the wind, the rock's particles crack slowly, slowly and here you can see downwards, these are the rock's particles. Slowly, slowly, it changes into the soil. Next we will see by water. How it is possible? Water can break the rock. 
so let's see children there are many places where it rains a lot the rain beats against the rock where there are continuous rain and causes them to break into small pieces look at this picture do you like collecting these type of stones where do we find these stones such stones are found in the sand or along the river oceans or sea children have you ever thought why we get these type of stones on the bank of the rivers oceans and waterfalls due to the continuously flowing water there is gradual erosion in the stones this process actually happens slowly it can take millions of years to dissolve a rock it does not matter how big the rock is that is why the stones around the rivers springs waterfalls etc are smooth round shape as you can see in this picture due to continuously flowing of water rocks changes the shape and slowly slowly rocks are dissolved in the water this is why it look smooth and round shape next we will see how ice can breaks the rock this process of breaking rocks occur in cold areas where snow falls when the temperature rises then the ice melts and fill in the cracks of the rocks here you can see when temperature rises then the ice melts and fills in the cracks of the rocks here you can see in blue color this is water when ice melts it fills in the rock and when the temperature drops then water freezes again here you can see water freezes when temperature drops the water freezes again the water takes the form of ice it increases in size which leads to crack here you can see when the ice melts again that water fills in large cracks and the ice expands further into the cracks you must have seen this process continues until the rocks break when you fill water fully you must have noticed after freezing when you take out the water from the refrigerator what happened then ice changes the shape of the bottle why in the same way happen in the nature when ice freezes ice expands further into the rocks this process continues until the rocks break now next we will see by plant how can plant breaks the rock is it possible let's see how do plants can break the rock children you must have seen many times that the trees are growing on the rocks and the roots of the trees are spread firmly in the rocks and around the rocks look at this picture a plant has grown in a thin crack of a stone as you can see here this crack is very thin and plant has grown in a thin crack of a stone have you ever imagined then its roots will increase due to which the cracks of the rock will start to increase and split into two pieces when plant grows the crack of the rock will also increase and split into two pieces so children that's it for now but before finishing the session let's repeat what we have learned today soil is a mixture of tiny pieces of rocks minerals water air and humus soil is formed by the breaking of rocks rocks break up due to the sun the rain ice and the roots of the plants in next session we will study about layers of the soil types of the soil 
color of the soil and why soil is important. Now is the time for homework. Question number one. What is humus made up of? Question number two. How does humus help the soil? Question number three. What is the topmost layer of the earth's surface? This homework you have to complete in your notebook. So thank you children. Study well and stay safe.